We share memories of Jalen Ferguson and Tony Saragusa with a very special guest next here on Locked On Ravens. You are Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we return here with another episode of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostreicher with Ravens Wire. Of course, we're here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Ravens your first listen of the day. We're free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube. And we're back here on a Purple Friday, and our Purple Friday guest is here with us to share some memories of both Jalen Ferguson and Tony Saragusa. It is former Baltimore Ravens wide receiver and Super Bowl champion, Kadri Ismail and Q. I wish we were talking in a better circumstances this week, but just remembering these two men and sharing memories about them, I think will be a really good thing. How are you doing? So I'm doing uh, wonderful. I'm doing sad. I'm doing uh, confused. I'm doing uh, remorse. I'm feeling just a range of emotions, uh, feeling, uh, you know, an overwhelming joy, overwhelming, uh, just sorrow. Why? Because one, I know um, from the Jalen Ferguson standpoint, you know, there's a young man who is yet to hit his prime and yeah, his life is ended and it all just, everything just seems to stop. And how do you deal with that and go on? And then on the other side of it, you know, I smile because I have a flood of memories with my teammate and dear friend, uh, Tony Saragusa, who uh, he's no longer here either. And so, yeah, I'm uh, I'm ready to talk and, and hopefully uh, this is uh, as therapeutic for me as it is for the uh, the viewer and listeners. Yeah, and just, you know, heartbreaking, heartbreaking circumstances and shocking, truly, some things that happened so quickly back to back here with obviously Jalen Ferguson being just 26 and Tony Saragusa being 55. But Q, I do want to start here with Jalen Ferguson because, I mean, the man that Jalen Ferguson was really was incredible. I go back to his draft day where his whole draft weekend, there was a tornado that hit. And he was out helping tornado victims during his big weekend, you know, saying he was pulling trees along the side of the road. And it, it spoke to his character, his his caring nature, the outpouring of love and support that was shown for Jalen Ferguson by teammates, coaches, loved ones, fans. In, in a heartbreaking situation, that was extremely heartwarming to see to me. So here's a cool thing to piggyback off what you said. You know, it, it talks to the selfless nature of, of Jalen, it talks to the bigger picture of him, not just being a football player, but recognizing that, you know, if you can do something and help others and, and from a physical standpoint of helping others too, um, you know, from a, a hurricane standpoint, just says an awful, awful lot. I think, you know, in this day and age where everything gets glamorized from a social media standpoint and how many followers or likes you have, uh, it's the human touching moments that you get to to look at and reflect on that really uh, says an awful lot. And I, I think, you know, for him to be remembered that way, um, you know, just just talks to the character of who he was. And I know that what also spoke to that are the statements that his teammates put out and John Harbaugh put out saying that, you know, the endless positivity, the way that he was so selfless, Ronnie Stanley saying that he would go out of, out of his way to tell you that you were doing a good job, even if it was going up against him. And again, Jalen Ferguson, the football player, you know, that's not something we should be focusing on. It should be the person, which I know we're doing here, Q. And I think it's so important because the things that he left behind for his teammates and his coaches and his loved ones and everyone that he knew, you could tell based off how everyone is speaking about him that he made such an impact on everyone. Yeah. And, and so, you know, the, the thing is, is that we, we, I think we can do a level of balance talking about, you know, him, the football player in the scope of how he handled his success and how he handled, you know, being around his teammates and, and what was the, 
the way in which he he did it, it, it was through his selfless nature. It showed his character. Um, when you have teammates really just like, man, you know, because because you don't often think about you know different personality of guys. You just yeah, all right, that, that's who he is. And then when something like this happens, that's so tragic that you then start to sit back and, and reflect as to why he was the way he was and, and what drew you to him. And that's something that I think for, you know, as a coach and John Harbaugh to, you know, formulate his 53 man roster, he's asking all the coaches, you know, what their opinions are. Can these guys win ball games for us? But John also has to take into account, you know, how this player is going to interact um, inside the locker room. I mean, chemistry is everything. You know, that's something that, you know, I'd love to speak on as far as even, you know, Tony, when we talk about Tony Saragusa, but, you know, for John Harbaugh and, and Jalen, you know, to, to show his character, to show who he was, I think that's important. I think that, uh, you know, Ronnie Stanley plays offense. He plays, you know, a, a position where, yeah, my job is to stop you from getting to my quarterback. And I know those one-on-one -on -one battles, they're tough, they're challenging, um, all of that. And, and for him to, to go out there and, and like, all right, I don't care. I'm going to do my best and I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to compete against you. Um, but then at the same time, like when it's all said and done, they'll go up to you and say, man, that was a great job, man. You had a good practice or whatever it might be. Um, again, shows bigger picture mentality, which you got to love and you got to appreciate. Yeah. And there is so much to, to love and appreciate about Jalen Ferguson. And I know, Part of that, Q, you mentioned kind of like the, the mini football aspect of everything. He was a hard worker. And I think that even what we saw and what we heard was that he had trimmed down, was looking lean like a different player. And that just speaks to his mentality both on and off the field. He was also a hard worker off of the field. I mean, he earned the nickname Sack Daddy in college for obviously breaking Terrell Suggs' FBS sack record. So, you know, him as a player – it's something where you, again, you balance out the football player with the person, but again, th these athletes, they're so generalized in terms of all their, they just put on a helmet, they go play and that's it. Right. That's not what it is. You know, athletes are humans, athletes are people. And the fact that Jalen Ferguson was such a hard worker and was such a phenomenal person and, and the, the impact that he made, I think just makes it all the love and support that we saw yesterday and, and today and, and even on Wednesday. So, so amazing to see in his life being celebrated like that. Yeah, you know, again, I think anytime um, you look at this league, it's it's such a oh, it's such a finite thing. I mean, you you know your time, you got to make the most of your time, and and I think for him, um, that's what you know I'm going to miss is is the the lost potential, the lost um, opportunity to to continue to realize your dreams. You know, you dream as this as a little boy, and and. You know, he had his fiance and his, you know, his his young kids that that uh, I believe they're all under what uh, four years of age, and that's a young family. You know, I know I had my kids when I was in the league and had a very young family as well, and and uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where you just you just want to you know make them proud and 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 go out and do your best and play for them and be you know, an inspiration to, to look upon, um, daddy. Yeah. Wow. You know, look, Hey guys, look, he's playing, you know, or whatever it might be. And now, you know, there's a void there. There's a big, big void. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sad for his family and, and for all the, the people and his loved ones. I mean, heck his mom, his dad, you know, they, they grew up, um, just nourishing him, nurturing him, I'm sure there were many a time going to the different rec league games and, and all the different sports that he might have participated in. And, you know, I'm sure there were some down moments and some cheerful moments and all those memories. You know, they're going to be looking at all those pictures. And, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> ah, you just, uh, you know, as a parent, your heart goes out for those parents and um, recognize that, uh, you know, you're 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 now in 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 holding on to memory mode as opposed to being able to uh, continue to see the dream be fulfilled. 
Yeah, and I know one thing that Jalen Ferguson, something that he did get to live out was being a father. And he was very proud of being a father, very proud of his kids. I know there were so many pictures and videos shared of him with his kids. I know Sarah Ellison put out a video of him with his kids. Yeah. And it's just, you know, you see those videos and you think, wow, you know, what an amazing person, an amazing father. And I'm glad that he was able to at least have those moments with his children because he cared. And I know that in the statement, some of the players were talking about how much he cared about his kids. And how he was so excited every time a new one was about to be born, he would always talk about them. So that was clearly a huge priority in his life and to leave that behind again, it, it is just a heartbreaking thing. But the person that Jalen Ferguson was, I mean, will never be forgotten. Someone who again, left such an impact on so many people. And I know another person who did leave an impact is Tony Saragusa. And we'll talk about him in the second segment. We'll go and talk about some memories of him. So be sure to stay tuned. Still a ton to talk about on Locked on Ravens. First though, I do want to tell you a bit about Bet Online and Bet Online that is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. That's the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. We're back. Our second segment of Locked On Ravens, Kevin Allstriker still here with Kadri Ismael and Q. We talked about Jalen Ferguson and just the amazing person that he was, but the Ravens suffered another tragedy on Wednesday, and that was the passing of Tony Saragusa, 55 years old, someone who you spent all three of your years in Baltimore with from 1999 to, to 2001, won the Super Bowl together there. And again, there are so many things to talk about with, with Tony Saragusa, just the person that he was, the impact that he left. I mean, what are you going to remember most about, about the goose is everybody called? Him? So there's a, a few things that I will remember. I can't necessarily just say, Hey, this, um, the, the, this, or the, these things, you know, the, the, the player, the teammate um, was the Mickey mouse shirt that he would wear at every game and, and, and wear it in honor of his, uh, his kids, his family. Um <laughs> The uh, the way in which uh, that dude was was just unfiltered, did not give a care, would just say the most bluntest, like just inappropriate things, and just you know didn't care. And it was it was hilariously timely, funny, and you know you'd be like, oh my god, wow! But he uh, was a fierce competitor on the field too. Like he, you know, it wasn't like he just sat there and was just some practical joker and that was it. I mean, that dude was, was just every bit of a him and Sam Adams, you know, you talk about that 2000 team, uh, the D line, you know, set the tone and he and Sam Adams were responsible for plugging up, you know, the middle and you did had three guys on two every single time. Um, you just weren't going to run the football otherwise. And if you did, you know, get by them, <laughs> that means that if three guys are being occupied too, therefore it means Ray Lewis is free or Jamie Sharper is free or Pete Bowware is free and Michael McCrary. So um, you, you, you saw the way in which Goose played and, and the intensity of, of his skill set. Um, I also look at the way in which um, – you know, Tony, when we transitioned into our second careers, as far as television and such, I was doing radio um, with the Ravens uh, at Cincinnati and, and uh, his, his crew had our Cincy Ravens game. And, you know, he's on the sideline with me, had his big old fur coat on. And what was so amazing, I mean, Tony, it was like, Q, what's going on, brother? you know, came up, gave me the biggest hug. You know, he was just cracking me up, man. I was like, hey, man, I love you, man. I just want to let you know. And, uh, yeah, man, I love you too. And, you know, he's like, man, they can never take this away from us ever. And we are champions. And and we we did something that no one else can can ever say uh, was done before. Now, I know for him, I'm like, yeah, y'all did it <laughs> on the defensive side. We were just going along for the ride. But, uh, yeah, you know, that was uh, that was really cool to um, experience that. And then, you know, with, with um, what I really, really respect about him was that, uh, you know, his son uh, went to uh, 
college with my son up at uh, Syracuse or uh, Villanova, and when he was there, uh, literally every time he was given some word of wisdom to my son, and it was it was sprinkled in with you know that that goose and the goose isms that he would say. <laughs> But I mean, it was like, it was true. Like whether it be, hey, bro, this is how you gotta, you know, practice and think about your practice and think about how hard you work. And me and your dad, I'm telling you, you know, here's how we went about it. And um, you know, you you gotta really just, you know, you 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 can't take it for granted. And then when uh, just recently, just saw him. This is what blows my mind. I just saw him. I just saw him at my son's and his son's graduation. The football team, there's a large number of seniors. We were all invited into the Nova locker room and we were just sitting there and Tony, you know, he sat back and, and he, he was, you know, just, just chilling. And I went up to him, Tony, what up? Ah, Q, what's going on? And he's like, man, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> he started pontificating. He was just like, you know, guys got to have heart. And, and I just don't know if guys, you know, have it here. Like, you, 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 you know, you, it's one thing, you know, to go out there and, and play, but it's another thing, like, when you when you got it. Like, you, you know what I mean? And I was like, yeah, hell yeah, I know what you mean. Like, it's how you got to play the game. Sure enough, my son comes up to me again. He's like, hey, Dad. I was like, yo. And um, I said, like, you remember uh, Mr. Goose? And he's like, man, yeah, you know, what's going on? Uh, Mr. Goose and um, – his son came up and we dapped it up, gave him a hug as well. Um, and I, I can't you know, imagine what he's going through, you know, missing his dad, I'm sure. And, and his uh, two sisters and, and everything having to uh, deal with this um, loss, but uh, it was cool. He, he sat there and was just talking to my son again. And uh, Goose was like, yeah, you know, I mean, your, your dad didn't do much, but he was on the team. <laughs> I was like, all right, okay. <laughs> you know, not many people can get away with some of the things he said. And, and um, you know, you just knew it was a place of love. If, if he wasn't busting on you, then he really didn't have a time of day for you. And that was the bottom line. Um, yeah, the stories are endless of, of Tony Saragusa and what he, he meant. He just had such a big heart and, and just – you know, it was just an awesome, awesome man uh, that will uh, be, be sorely missed. Yeah, and his personality is something that carried him so far, but it's not just, you know, his his goofy nature and his goofy self. It, it was the heart that he had. And, and a lot of people, I'm, I'm glad that we, again, saw so much support, so much outpouring of love for him over these past couple of days and just what he brought to the, to the table here. And Q, I know him as an analyst, he spent a, a good time at Fox and yeah. did a lot of good things over there. When you guys were playing, did you ever have a sense that, that he was made out for TV? Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just knew it. Like you, he had his own radio show. I think if I'm not mistaken, I was on um, <clears throat> his show in uh, 99 and I was like, yeah, maybe I'll just go by myself and not break my, my wife at the time because uh, he was just so like, woo. <laughs> it was so funny. He's just like, all right, I don't want to think, you know, my teammates are kind of wacko, but uh, I mean, he had everybody rolling in stitches on his show. I mean, from start to finish. And I think, again, like he actually, he was on, um, the thing is, it, it wasn't just ha ha funny. Uh, it was the in, information and insight. He he came on my radio show, my my radio show on uh, WBAL with uh, Brett Hollander. But he would come on and we would talk shop, bro. He was sharp. He he was like you know he tell it like it is. You know here's what what I see from the guys and and why they um, are struggling or why they were succeeding. Um, yeah, he would definitely, you know, be free flowing with information. It wasn't like he was holding back or or trying to, uh, you know, be ill informed and just say anything off the cuff. Like he was very spot on with his analysis. Yeah, and it's something that made him so successful during his time as, as a radio host and as, as a TV guy. And Q, I know that 
you guys spent some time on hard knocks and there are a lot of clips clips from hard knocks where i know the big one is the, the i want my restitution skit <laughs> The one where, uh, you know, the rookies are impersonating Shannon and all those. And I remember just vividly that that memory of just watching it. And to this day, it's a clip that, you know, never, never gets sold. I mean, what do you remember about that whole thing and just the, the, the life that he brought based off of the pranks that he did and his funny side that I think is something that's very important about him? So I, I just I mean, I didn't I didn't know like Hard Knocks was going to be Hard Knocks. I mean, that technically we were the first, uh, you know, virtual or not virtual, but reality, um, reality TV show, you know, and, and, and goose, <laughs> he definitely provided the, the comedy. I mean, he, he was hilarious. He, he was like, you know, um, Todd heap, you know, they had cameras on Todd and here comes Tony coming around the corner and, and Tony's like, Hey, uh, Rook, what, what are you doing? You know, what's your name? You know, Hey, I'm Todd, you know, is this my wife? Ashley and you know, he and Ashley are talking, whatever, whatever, and they leave. And like, hey, man, listen, don't bring your wife around here. That's yeah, you don't want to. Do. I'm like, oh my god, Tony, what are you saying? But good god, man, like, <laughs> but you know, obviously, Ashley, very attractive, uh, young lady. And and I remember when, um, gosh, it was because he was they might have been it was maybe it was his fiance she was his fiance still maybe it was his wife um but oh my god i mean he was hilarious like tony was he was just unfiltered and so he would say stuff like that then of course the rookie show and having all the rookies sing and if they didn't sing right bro he would let you know um and yeah the classic one was him and and Shannon getting into it, <laughs> him locking them into their uh, their meeting room, the little uh, trailer that they were in, the extra extra uh, meeting room where the tight ends met. <laughs> it was hilarious, and that skit, arguably, I was in a league for ten years, and I've seen every rookie show known to man, and that was the all time of all time, all time funniest skits ever um that was i mean it just gut laughing and uh oh my god I, that's memories that I'll, I'll cherish uh cherish for a lifetime yeah he provided so many to so many people and again it's just the impact that he made and obviously you know we can, we can talk about him as a football player and say he did this and he did that but it's what he left behind as a person that, that i think is going to be just live it's going to live on forever the memories the laughs as, as we've been doing here you've been telling these stories you've been laughing about it and remembering him and i think a way that that really fits him based off of his personality and the way that he was able to provide so many laughs and just be a very upstanding human in general. So again, Jalen Ferguson and Tony Saragusa, two men that live very fulfilling lives and left behind such an impact here. And we'll continue to leave behind that legacy forever. But we'll head into our final break here on Locked On Ravens. When we get back, we'll talk a bit about the Ravens culture and, and again, how important that is at a time like this. So be sure to stay tuned for that and we'll be right back. We're back here with our final segment of Locked on Ravens. Kevin Oshaker still here with Kadri, Ismael, and Q. We talked about Jalen Ferguson and Tony Saragusa and the, the legacy that they left behind as people. But the Ravens and their culture, I think it's so important now, and I talked a bit about this on my show yesterday, uh, just how important it is for, for these guys to be able to band together in a time like this. And I know – Again, mini camp for them just ended in terms of Jalen Ferguson, where they just saw him. I know, again, the, the celebration of the 2000s team and you seeing Tony Saragusa at the college graduation. Again, it's it's very fresh and new. So how important is it for the Ravens to have the strong culture that they've established over so many seasons, so many years here at a very heartbreaking time like this? You know, it's interesting. So goes the head, so goes the tail. In other words, you know, the organizational head is, is obviously Steve Bashotti. Before him, it was Art Modell. Um, people use the term once a fill in a blank, always a fill in a blank. All I remember is that originated in my mind. I don't, I don't know who else, but Art Modell, once a Raven, always a Raven, was what he had uh, coined. And, you know, that right there, I think, just says an awful lot from the establishment of who and what you are uh, and what you mean to the organization. Um, you know, I just think for uh, guys like uh, Tony Saragusa, guys like Jalen Ferguson, Brian Billick, um, John Harbaugh, 
you know, uh, Ozzy and, and Eric, you know, they, they put together um, staffs and put together uh, templates on, on how to be and how to act. You know, you, you look at a front office that has stability. It doesn't seem to have a lot of turnover. A lot of the scouts, they, if they're getting an upgrade, they're getting a major upgrade to, you know, run their own organization. Otherwise, you see guys staying and enjoying their their time. You know, that that's because of the way you've been treated. Um, I see, you know, obviously there's two coaches that, you know, obviously the third being Coach Marchabrota, but uh, – two coaches that, that have been here and they've been consistent, you know, and, and that goes to, you know, Mr. Modell and, and obviously Steve Ashadi and what he means as far as like what he expects uh, from a consistency standpoint of, of being who you are inside the organization. And, 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 I, and I think, you know, when tragedy happens or challenges or adversity happens, it's easier to, to circle that wagon and, and to, you know, say, look, you know, here's who we are and let's, let's not, you know, um, just fold. Let's not, uh, you know, forget ourselves. And um, that's what the Raven community is about. And that's what, you know, feels so cool when, when I, I look at the, the way the Ravens and the way they do things. Yeah, and I think part of the whole thing, too, is I know so many people talk about, oh, well, you know, veterans want to come to the Ravens because they're successful and there's so many good things they've heard about the organization. But part of the reason is we, we've heard all these guys, you know, coming in for their final couple of seasons and then, you know, retiring or going somewhere else. The, the guys talk about how amazing the organization was from a support perspective, from a family perspective, and it continues on for years and years and years after where that is some of the the biggest memories they have is how supportive the organization was and not just the on-field success that they've had, but the ability to feel like they are part of a family to feel supported. And I know not, not all organizations have that. And it's a very special, almost rare thing that, that the Ravens have and how they value that culture. They take care of families, they take care of everybody. And I think that in a, in again, a tragedy time like this is extremely important. When you have adversity it's one thing when you have your, you know, fun, fluffy moments, I think uh, sometimes things can just kind of just get brushed to the side and, and you have this false reality of what you think you are or who you think you are. Um, but again, that, that, uh, that adversity tests your metal, tests who you are, uh, tests your character, tests your consistency of support and, you know, I think for what the Ravens have provided with, uh, I know me and in, in, in what, you know, some of us and in, in what we call in the NFL, our legends community, our Ravens legends community, um, the immediate uh, call out to the guys and, and getting guys together um, was so powerful. So, yeah, um, it's real. I mean, it, it, again, you you don't um, you don't hear about that from just any old organization. I think this this is uh, a testament to you know um, the genuineness of, of ownership on down, and I think that's something that uh, I appreciate and respect about uh, the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, there are heavy hearts all around right now, but I know what the Ravens have built. They they have they have a good setup right now to help these players, help these coaches, help the loved ones as well, help the families. And I think that's all so important, especially what when someone or a team or whoever does deal with adversity, to, to have a strong culture around you helps. And the Ravens have, have certainly built that over their franchise history. And in, in, in a time like this, I do think that is so, so important. But Q, I appreciate you coming on here today. Thank you so much for joining me. And again, it's, it's a tragedy, heavy hearts all around here. But I do think the Ravens will – play this season for Jalen Ferguson, play this season for Tony Saragusa and the memories of those two, again, they'll, they'll last forever. They certainly will. Uh, once a Raven, always a Raven. And uh, I've been blessed to uh, have spent a significant amount of time with uh, Tony Saragusa. And uh, my heart goes out to him and his family, as well as Jalen Ferguson. Didn't get a chance to personally meet him. But uh, I tell you what, he, uh, from what I've heard, um, epitomized what it was to be a Raven. So, blessings to uh to all of them and and i want to say this to you as far as just our budding friendship and and uh working relationship i do appreciate coming on to your show and 
um, being able to, you know, talk shop, talk some football and, and talk about the Ravens. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes we, we just kind of go, go, go. and We don't give each other flowers. Well, you know, this is an opportunity for me to uh, say how much I appreciate and respect who you are uh, as a man and, and, and what you do. Uh, but then also the friendship and the respect that you uh, afford me and, and allow me to be on your show is, uh, is it's, it's not taken uh, for granted. Well, I mean, that, that it, it means the world for you to say that. And I mean, in terms of flowers, you know, people who, who watch the show, they see us talking football, they see us, you know, talking shop. But I mean, what we have built together as a friendship, as you talked about, being able to just talk off camera before the shows, after the shows, laugh together, have serious conversations. And, and remember, like we did here today on this show, it, it all, it, it's been amazing and honor to be able to talk with you just be able to pick your mind about football, but also the human aspect of everything. Again, this is the show. It's, it's a Ravens podcast, obviously, but we, we go so in depth on so many different topics, so many different conversations that, you know, when we have to kind of deviate from the X's and O's and touchdowns and interceptions, and we have to have conversations like this, what we have built, you know, creates a, a chemistry and a friendship that, you know, is really valuable and really special to me. So I want to say thanks to you, Q, for coming on here every Friday. It's a grind, I know, but it's a grind that I enjoy doing with you here and something I'm looking forward to continuing for a very, very long time. And again, my, my prayers and thoughts out to Jalen Ferguson and Tony Saragusa as well, their families, loved ones, teammates and coaches and everybody who was impacted by them, which I know was very many people, whether they had the opportunity and honor to talk to them or not. So again, two men whose memories will be remembered forever. But that's all I have for you here today on Lockdown Ravens. Thank you so much for tuning in. When we get back here on Monday after a two-day break, we'll be diving into more Ravens content. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And I will see you here on Monday.